recognizes the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Moulton, for five minutes. Mr. Chair, quick request permission to address the House for five minutes. And the gentleman's recognized without objection. Today is, is World Suicide Prevention Day and Firearm Suicide Prevention Day. In 2022, almost 50,000 Americans died by suicide. 1.6 million Americans attempted suicide. More than half of all gun deaths in the United States are by suicide. On average, we lose 74 people to a firearm suicide every single day. And the firearm suicide rate among children in the U.S. is growing. More younger Americans are struggling with their mental health than ever before. And we know that when there's a gun in the home, the risk of suicide death jumps by 300%. The result is tragedy. Each of us here in this chamber has an enormous responsibility to serve here in Washington and to help Americans. Yet Americans are dying and we're doing little to stop it. Something is seriously broken. Gun deaths are not just a fact of life we should accept. Every gun death is preventable, including self-inflicted ones. Seventy percent of those who survive a suicide attempt will never attempt it again. That's a remarkable statistic. Seventy percent of those who survive a suicide attempt won't try it again. Reducing gun deaths in our country isn't a zero-sum proposition. We have to address gun safety and the mental health crisis. It's not getting too political or a cop-out to talk about both. First and foremost, reducing firearm-related suicides can be as simple as storing firearms safely and securely, which means locked, unloaded, and separated from ammunition. Simple practical steps can reduce impulsive decisions and save lives. The 988 Mental Health Lifeline is already making a huge difference. Not only are millions of Americans calling and texting to get help in a moment of crisis, but even more, simply know where to get help if they need it. We also have to get back to watching out for one another, to building strong, resilient communities where people aren't lonely and isolated behind their screens, and where friends and neighbors recognize the signs when someone is struggling and find the courage to speak out. We can stand together to create a future where no one feels like they have no other choice. Together, we can offer hope, and together, we can save lives. Mr. Speaker, I yield back.